Hi everyone, Nuli Cherry, and uh, today we have once again Salem who keeps providing us, uh, supplying us with the interesting presentations and stories. Please, Salem. Hi. Today uh, I will talk about the various deployment tools you can find uh, in the NixOS world and why we need NixOS specific tools. Um, what alternatives we can use. Um, so why do we need some specific tools for NixOS? Um, it's most NixOS sysadmins I know like NixOS when they use it on their laptop or desktop or any workstation. But when they think at how I would like to use NixOS for my own server. It's a bit daunting because you don't know how you will manage this over time. Uh, if you are used to something like Ansible, Sol, Puppet, or any market grade deployment tool, it's obviously not a good fit for NixOS because of its nature. You can't push configuration file. What you want to do is pushing a configuration entirely and make it, making the remote system to switch on this configuration uh, and not push it just files uh, in a stateful system. So it can be a downside, downside for sysadmin or uh, any people in general, but sysadmins are more inclined into using NixOS on servers from themselves or to push NixOS at work if they have a good experience with it. And so if you don't know how to manage your own servers, you don't use NixOS. And this is hurting Nix adoption in general, in my opinion, because I, I won't recommend something I don't know how to use and that is too intimidating to use. So it's important to have good tooling to improve the user experience and get into a, a circle of, uh, it's something work, so I use it and I recommend it and someone else use it and so on. So um, on the Nix community, awesome Nix, uh, for any project you have uh, awesome something on GitHub, there is a deployment tools category. So I, I found a few of them there and a few other in the NixOS wiki and some other on GitHub. Um, I will quickly introduce them uh, in the order of let it's interesting or not active to most interesting. Um, so there is PushNix. Its target is a NixOS remote system. And it's some kind of a wrapper around. Uh, and when you push something new into this Git repository with a hook, it triggers NixOS rebuild. And you don't have much more information. Uh, we have KubeNix. That, that seems great, but I'm not a Kubernetes expert. Uh, it's advertised as a tool to generate case resources. It has documentation. So if you want to experiment with this, I'll be just report if you can get something with it. Uh, we have Kubernix, it also is unstable um, due to a change in the start. So, closer on your laptop, and you can use Nix packages to generate uh, stuff in that cluster, but I didn't have the opportunity to try it. We have Nixory. Uh, it's an active project. It targets Docker environment. 
and with a simple command line uh, with a curl, I think, or with Docker, you can automatically generate Docker image on the fly using Nix packages. Um, you, you just ask the Nixory slash uh, something, and it will automatically create a Docker with that something running in it. And it's really convenient. It's correctly documented. Um, if you have use case with Docker, this can be very useful to, to ease generating image. <clears throat> uh, also, they, they advertise they have a smart layer thing for, for the Docker. So they quickly rebuild if you make a change into your Nix expression. Uh, we have the Nix OS shell. Uh, that was a very interesting project, and I'm happy to cover it today. Uh, it's not very active, but <laughs> the point of this project is not to give a shell with a Nix packages in it, like with Nix shell, <clears throat> but generating a Nix OS virtual machine. Um, mount your home directory in it and just make you jump into a NixOS on the fly uh, without much hassle of having to generate a virtual machine and populate it and configure it. Uh, it's a alternative to this box, which use Docker, but this one is generating on the fly NixOS virtual machines. Now, if you want to use NixOS on any non-NixOS system that have Nix, uh, this can be the opportunity to experiment with NixOS. Uh, I found Terranix into the deployment tools. It's a bit specific because it used Terraform as a target. Um, you use Nix expression to generate Terraform states. Uh, if you don't know, Terraform is uh, um, the most common tool used to manage cloud resources like um, creating new virtual machines, declaring virtual um, domain names or Huntly. You, you can even manage a Discord server with uh, some plugins. And Terranix is a wrapper around Nix expression. You can write modules and it outputs a Terraform file. And then you can use Terraform as usual. It's still a deployment tool because you can just go full Nix to manage your, your cloud infrastructure. <clears throat> um, there is NixOS Rebuild. So it, it's a base tool in NixOS because you use it to reconfigure your system every time you make a change. <clears throat> but actually it's a most simple way to to deploy on your systems. Um, it has some maybe not very popular flags like uh, the dash dash target. And you can use Nixos Rebuild to rebuild other system uh, than yours. And it's worth mentioning because most tools will, will rely on Nixos Rebuild. You have a uh, Nixos auto upgrade module that is from Nix packages. <clears throat> um, the point of auto upgrade is just saying, I want to upgrade my system uh, at this time in the day and you can reboot if there is a kernel change. Um, you can say you can reboot from this hour to this hour uh, with a time window. Uh, it, it's very efficient and simple to set up. It, it works fine if you have one workstation. We have Terraform NixOS, which is a tweak project. It's not really active because it didn't receive much uh, commits over the last year, but um, this is not something that changed often. So it, it may be normal that it's not super active. Uh, Ni Terraform NixOS is used for cloud targets. It's a mix of using your Terraform infrastructure code, um, giving the possibility to generate virtual machine with NixOS or 
auto scaling group using an XOS with, with the correct configuration. Uh, if you have an auto scaling group that will create or delete virtual machine on the fly, you don't want to have something building the system for 20 minutes every time it, it shows up. So Terraform NixOS can help having a golden image that would just work uh, when they pop up and keep them keep them yeah, keep them up to date. So if you need to manage um, NixOS in a cloud environment, Terraform NixOS could be interesting for you. Uh, we have crops. Uh, I think it's the author name. Uh, it's an active project. Last commit was yesterday. Um, this one is targeting a NixOS system. And it works by pushing a config to the remote system. Uh, it just push a config file and trigger a re rebuild with NixOS rebuild. It, it has some extra check and you can manage a few hosts with this. Um, it has a specific secret management, but we will see a secret management later. Uh, a very recent project is CacheX Deploy. Uh, so it's very active because it was announced stable uh, yesterday. It targets NixOS. Um, CacheX Deploy works by having your computer connecting to CacheX um, servers. Um, when a new version is available or new thing, you instantly start to download it and switch to the new version. So all the build is delegated to CacheX and they know correctly how to handle building. Uh, it automatically roll back if something is going wrong and you can specify how to check if something is wrong, but it's a proprietary service. So you can't, you can't use it uh, without paying CacheX. <laughs> we have Colmena. It's an active uh, project targeting NixOS. It works by pushing SSH closure. So it's mostly all the configuration and derivation you need to build on the system. Uh, but most of the time, the deployment tools we will see uh, just after push everything to the remote system. But with Colmena, you can just push a derivation and target the rebuild on the remote machine. So you don't have to rebuild everything, but you can show uh, who is building the derivation. There is NixOps. Uh, I think it's the most specific tool in this list. You can use it uh, in the cloud for virtual machines uh, locally with uh, VirtualBox, LibVirt, um, maybe one or another, and directly NixOS host. NixOps can talk to an API. Uh, if you need, it currently supports Edsner, AWS, uh, Google Cloud. Um, it used to support Azure, but the support was removed because it didn't work well. Um, NixOps is entirely different because it can automatically provision resources, like you want a virtual machine, but it will allocate the disk, the network, the machine, and start everything. And you can also use it to monitor your remote cloud systems so it's a bundle of many things, but with an emphasis on cloud stuff. Then we have Morph. Uh, it's a tool that can connect to remote NixOS with SSH and push the closure. Uh, so everything is built locally and pushed to the remote system and trigger uh, a switch to the new configuration. You can use a batch deploy with Morph. I think it's the only one supporting this. If you have 100 servers, you can say uh, with the batch deploy, just deploy them 10 by 10. So th this could 
reduce constraint on shared resource or yeah, real world needs for this kind of thing. And it can also do ELF check. So you can verify the configuration was correctly pushed and that the server correctly works. And also a bit like NixOps, you can, it can handle running commands over SSH and check that for return. Uh, we have Nix us from someone at Twig. Uh, I didn't find much information about it, but it works with pushing the closure of the configuration by SSH and it supports rollback. But another interesting feature is if you manage uh, free servers, you can automatically generate key keys with SSH and make them trust each other with these keys. So you create a, a mesh network of authorized SSH between each other. And I found this very convenient. Uh, we have Deploy RS, which is developed by Serokel. I think it's a, a major Nix player for um, hosting with NixOS. Um, Deploy RS works by pushing the closure of configuration to, to other to the remote server. Uh, what is different with this is you can push a profile. Instead of pushing the system profile, you can just push a user profile if you want to just update one user. Uh, I think this, this is an interesting approach that is unique to deploy RS. And it also supports the uh, rollback, advertised as magic rollback. And finally, uh, there is Bento. It's something I started last week. And it's a bit different because you publish the configuration file over SFTP. And all the remote servers will regularly get the file and start rebuild locally and support the rollback. And on the main server, you can check the current state of each remote server and if everything's okay. And last time we saw them um, if they built correctly. So uh, now an important topic when it comes to deployment is secret management. On the NixOS wiki, you have a page related to this with a nice table and comparison. The issue with secrets is if you put things, if you put things into the Nick store, uh, everyone everyone can read a, or you have in the Nick store. So if you put secrets, any user can read them. Uh, it's not very convenient. If you push a SSH key or something, it will end up into the store. And it's not safe. Very four major schemes available, but they all have pros and cons. So I can tell you can use this one or it's just better than all the other. And one which in my opinion is very nice is specific to NixOps. So you have to use NixOps if you want this uh, scheme. The, the difference is how do you ship the secret? Uh, do you put it in the store or do you put it aside the store and make a link of, to it in the store? And do you unlock it with a GPGK interactively or at boot time or automatically with something? And is the secret for everyone or just for one user? Um, where do you store the secret that is unveiled for the runtime of the machine? Uh, it's a big topic and no clear winner at this time, but hopefully the, the four schemes you have are correct enough to be used. So you will ask, uh, which tool should I use? Uh, I don't have a real 
answer to this because we have many tools for deploying because we have many use cases, many requirements. I try to make a, a little summary of this. So uh, recommendation per use case. If you have just one or two workstation and autonomous computers that doesn't interconnect with anyone and you don't have a, a nap time constraint, I would go with the auto upgrade module or just run Nixos rebuild when you, you make a change. Um, you, you just need to do a manual update every six months when you are using an XOS release because you just have to update the, the channel or your flake input to the new release. It's not a big job, but you, you still need to think about it. Um, if you have a, a full cloud infrastructure, I would use NixOps, NixOps because it can manage all the provisioning. Um, it's also a tool for remote management. Um, check up if everything is fine. I didn't have experience. I don't have experience with NixOps, but um, in my opinion, this seems a very good project if you need to manage a lot of servers and you don't want to do everything with Terraform to provision it and then use another tool to like Terraform NixOS to put some NixOS layer on top of this. Um, if you want to manage remote servers that are available all the day, I would use uh, deploy RS, Morph, or Colmena. Uh, Colmena has a very good documentation compared to most of the tools here. I think it's the best documented. Uh, they all work the same way. You have all your configuration files locally, and you build uh, the new system locally, and you push everything over SSH. It has trade-off, like you need to build everything locally and you need to have high bandwidth to push the, the new files. But if you are using servers from hand to hand, this is usually not an issue. Um, if you have any system that isn't time sensitive, like you can update them one by one and it doesn't, it's not very important if you have to wait one or one hour on one day for the update to occur. Uh, you have catch X deploy, which um, your new configuration is always up to date uh, in cache X servers. And when you pour up your system and can connect to the internet, it will download the, the new version and switch to it. It's very efficient. Um, you have Bento that I wrote because there are no alternative. But it's not very efficient if you have servers that rely to each other, because if you make a config change that need a config change to another server, you may want to make them uh, sequentially or at the same time. Um, with Bento, you have no guarantee they are done in the order you want. Uh, so I take the opportunity to talk about Bento um, self-promotion. <laughs> oh, I broke everything. Um, so why did I wrote this? Uh, because my use case is I have my laptop to manage a few workstation and a few simple servers like my home NAS, my router and uh, dedicated server. I have a DSL line for my internet access and I can't push things any faster than 80 kilobytes second. So it, it's not okay for me to, to push closure every time I make a change to a computer. Um, as I manage workstation, they are not always connected. So I, I can't expect 
an SSH to, to work all the time. And in that scenario, I would use like deploy RS. I would have to pour up a workstation, go on my laptop and run deploy RS to the, that computer or make an infinite loop trying to SSH into it every n minutes until it, it has worked. Uh, it wasn't very sufficient for me. Um, it, it, was, it works asynchronously, so it's very fun because you have different challenge. Um, how do you track the state of each remote? How do you know which version we have? How do you under sharing configuration with them? Uh, when writing it, in my mind, I was thinking about using NixOS in a corporate environment. And you have like 200 employees using NixOS uh, with their names as login. Um, you can just create a flake file with everyone's name in this and push that flake to everyone because the flake will end up into the Nix store. So any employee could access the Nix store and the flake and know about every computer around and their configuration, the names, the tools on each system. So I had to find how to just give enough information for the system to work without sacrificing the admin part at sharing, document, uh, sh sharing code between each host. So everything generated on a central server. Um, only the parts required are made available to the SFTP server, which is a standard and secure technology. Um, it can bypass firewalls easily because SSH can be used in many ways to bypass anything if you, if you want to bypass, of course. Um, you can't expect all your employees to, uh, to have their laptop connected to the internet all the day, so you can't push any configuration to them. Um, I, I found if someone is calling the help desk and they want a, a new program or they have an issue, you still should be able to force an update instead of waiting for the timer to occur in the next n minutes. So I added a, uh, a funny feature. You can connect to a local TCP port. Uh, it works with a web browser. And it triggers the update and just displays the output of the log. So if you're on the phone with uh, a user, you can just ask them to push that update mark in the and it triggers the update. Uh, it's still a work in progress, but it, it's going fine. It's a very fun project on my spare time. I don't know if this will go anywhere. Um, but it's CacheX deploy now that is on the same segment. But uh, I won't make an alternative to CacheX deploy. Uh, do we have question? Uh, okay, I had network issue. Uh, can you hear me? Yes. Okay, uh, so I'll go ahead and ask uh, the first question. Um, so, you talked about especially how it can be useful for corporate environments. Uh, one thing I've seen in some corp corporations was that the IT security was very tight and they wanted like to build every artifact themselves so to check them manually and then eventually push them to the computers. Uh, does the, any of the systems you've presented allow to do exactly that? Uh, specifically, like only allow, like would it be possible to only allow uh, people to use Nix, but 
not to build things, rather just to pull things from a cache? Um, I didn't check, so it's only guess, but if you disable the cache, uh, the official cache server, uh, and only give your binary cache, um, you should also be able to prevent people to build things locally. Uh, using this, this could work like you said. Uh, if you want a package, you need to go to fetch it from the binary cache where it's curated. And if you want to try to bypass this, uh, you are not allowed and you can't build from sources. But then you should prevent people to install the next standard uh, version and have a local store. So you also have the usual security issue trying to prevent people to do stuff. Yeah. But I guess if you want to have people use whatever has been built using Nix on their computer, the sort of easiest thing to do is to use Nix on said computers. And so then uh, they have Nix, they can build things. Or is it possible to install things? Like, would it be possible to sort of like deploy stuff built with Nix without having Nix installed on the target? I think you devices? can prevent user to use Nix at all if you don't want them to. Yeah. Um, Brian is suggesting also to remove the signing key from the official cache so you can't use it. Hmm. I, I think you can prevent people to use Nix on the Nix shell. So this just solves the problems. Okay. I assume you can also disable Nix build. This is something I didn't think about, uh, but uh, I will investigate because this could be interesting. Do we have other questions? No. Okay. So if uh, we don't have uh, more questions, I guess we can finish here. Uh, thank you, Salem, for another very interesting presentation. And um, see you next week. See you. <laughs>